Inga, hello. How are you? I'm uh, good. How are you? I'm good. I see mm. that you're drinking tea and I'm drinking red wine. <laughs> That's the time difference. It's oh, what, what, what time is it? I mean, here it's 10.30 in the morning. So, you know, I'm having both tea and coffee at the same time. Oh, fancy. Well, it is 7.35 <laughs> p.m. here in Australia. Good time for a glass of wine. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> tell us about yourself and where you're from. So uh, uh, I'm from Oslo, Norway. Excuse me. <clears throat> Where it's winter now, so I have a bit of a cold, but um, all good. And um, I, I grew up here in Oslo, but uh, then I lived for quite some time abroad. I lived in France and in Lebanon, then in France again, and then back to Oslo. So it's been a bit of a round trip. Um, my violinist, uh, I started playing when I was very young. I don't have I don't have any memories without playing violin, or I had memories without playing violin, luckily, but but not chronologically. And uh, I uh, come from a family of where everyone plays, so so it just like kind of happened. But I'm I'm glad. I think I think uh, it's my favorite instrument. Violin. So. You compose your own music as well. How did you get into composition? And were you, like, you've been playing the violin since you were young. Were you composing when you were young as well? According to my mom, I was composing when I was a child. But from then and until now, there's been, there's been a break in that activity. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I always felt like I should. Like, it was, like, a logical thing to do. Like... But, uh, but it took me a while, actually. And, um, and it took a lot of like attempts before gaining some sort of confidence and also just gaining the tools. Like it's something you get better at and I'm still learning. Like I feel like I'm learning all the time how to, how to like write music and how to, um, like for example, on on this album like some of the melodies like some of the tracks they just they wrote themselves right like you know what i mean like you just pick them out of the air like they're just there you almost have to like double check that you didn't just hear it somewhere <laughs> and some of and some of the other ones they were like a, like a proper job to write like i had like something i wanted to do and i tried a million different ways how to make it work and how to do it and and they changed so much over time. And I have a thousand, you know, these voice memos on your phone mm -hmm. where you can just like record yourself singing something or whatever. I have a million of them and I constantly have to go back and delete them because I never have any space. Do, and you, then, do you label them or are they all called new recording number, number, number? There is a lot of new recording number, number, number. I, <laughs> I try, you know, I know that it's a good idea to label them, but, but still, uh, yeah, there's new recording 332, you know, <laughs> you have them too, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I have millions, <laughs> but I never label them. So I'll be like, what is this? So they all look the same. So I have to go through every one to try and find, find the idea. Yeah that each song has its own journey, which is cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. I also feel like sometimes I have this like clear idea before even writing the song that like, I want a song that I want it to have this kind of elements. I want it to have this kind of like maybe rhythmic pattern or like there's like a lot of ideas before the music even enters. Mm -hmm. And then other times it's just like, the melody is just, it's just there and the, uh, and on, yeah, on the album, it's um, it's kind of 50-50 actually on, on like the songwriting process of like tracks that just arrived and tracks that really had to be, be thought about a lot. And so your the title of your album, I mean, yeah, your album is North, South, East, West. And I was going yeah. to ask your title track. So there's 
um, like dawn, swirls, sails, steps, rapids. Like it's all quite like nature vibes. What is there? What's like, is there a theme behind, like what's the album about? Uh, well, I think that came, actually the titles, it's a funny story. I am, um, everything had other titles that were very like, technical it was just related to the rhythmic patterns of each song and I was like okay I need other titles and uh, I always had a feeling of what the album was about but it was very not concrete it was more like the album is blue you know Mm -hmm. it has something to do with water it has something to do with eyes I don't know but nothing clear and then I uh, went to my mom who's really good with associations and Mm -hmm. she made the titles uh, or we made them together but she made most of them and uh, and she was just sitting and listening she was like I feel like this is something like this this." and it was just perfect like she just like picked the so so the credit goes to her actually Um, a lot of this like dawn and swirls is hers do you have a favorite track of the album no, I don't. Uh, I have, uh, but they, they, it changes, it mm-hmm. changes around. There's some that I really, there's some that I like, I have like a um, special relation. I like Versus, this Versus, the one, three, four. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, this one called uh, Rapids. I really, really like to play it live. It's like, a, it's a, super fun i feel like the favorite thing it changes like there would be a but i also my feeling about everything i do changes all the time like shit i mean the process <laughs> of writing this album it went from like this is yes 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 to like oh this is so stupid this is so banal i don't know what is this stupid little song oh my gosh so like, no would... yeah but I think it's part of the process like you have to have that right like I think so it's like um some sort of like thing that you have to go through before like coming out on the other end with a finished product or whatever you want to call it like, what is something about yourself that most people wouldn't know Oh shit! I'm not sure if I can answer that. Oh, I love dinosaurs or something like this. Thing. <laughs> you like dinosaurs? Oh sure, I like dinosaurs. They are my spirit animal. Why? I don't know. Why dinosaurs? Of all the animals, why do you pick dinosaurs as your spirit animal? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just um, really enjoy thinking about how the Earth was a completely different place. Like. 200 million years ago like it's totally different and this totally different creatures were here and like if, if you sometimes get a bit stressed about everything feels a bit overwhelming you can just think about the fact that like the continents used to be one huge continent and then they broke apart and like what is there to worry about like uh, yeah you don't have things. a t-rex chasing after you well, that's another take as well. Yes. <laughs> Guess the slang Auss- Aussie edition. Have you oh, ever? I love that. Australia! Australia! Are quite well known for having some weird slang and having some very strange phrases. So I've got a list of some of our phrases and slang and you have to guess what it is Australians call it this what is a sanger sanger a sanger maybe a singer a sandwich oh no (laughs) next one what's an esky esky Mm -hmm. esky okay I'm I mean I immediately think it's a box because box you're in English is esque. Really? Yeah, you're close. We put we put something in it. Okay. Because esque means box in Norwegian. Oh, really? Eske. I didn't know that. Maybe it's the same word. We'll see what it actually means. Uh, is it a suitcase? 
No. So it's a like a cooler that you put ice in and you put your drinks in it or food, oh. but mostly drinks. So when you go to a party, you take an esky. With with ice, like to keep it cold. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What is a stubby? It's uh okay. Uh a stubby? A stubby, yeah. Uh, it's something short and stubby. Uh... <laughs> okay, okay. Let's say uh, let's say it's like a tree. Like you cut down the tree, and like what is left is stubby. It's not right. <laughs> no. So a stubby is a beer bottle. Okay. It is so difficult. I've never heard this. Okay, you have to give me another one. It's fascinating. All right. The phrase is. Handy as a sock full of grasshoppers. Handy as a sock full of grasshoppers. I am going to assume that that means not handy at all. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Correct. It means that you're useless. Finally. If we say something is cactus, what is it? That something is cactus. Mm-hmm. Like okay, I, could say, I could say, oh, my laptop. My laptop is cactus. Oh, does it mean that it's kaput? Tea. Yeah, it does. Woo-hoo. Okay, it's good that you gave me the phrase though, because first I was thinking like it either it has to mean that something is very cool or that it's really, really, really uh, awful. Mm-hmm. But then, I, but yeah, something is cactus means that it is. Why though? This is the last Ooh. one. So great. In Australia, if we say yeah, nah. Does that mean yes or no? Yeah, no. Nah. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I'm just going to try to get the feeling of it. Like if you say My to feeling? me, Camille, are you going to go to the concert tonight? And I go, oh, yeah, no. Nah. Does that mean yes it or no? It means no. It means no. Right? Ding! It does. Correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready to come to Australia. You'll just have to come to Australia so you can get yeah. 100%. Yes. Definitely, definitely. (laughs) Wow, that was difficult.